Hey, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. Hey, you know, uh, the title of today's video is, Where Did All Your Fake Bibles Come From? Because in actuality, there is only two Bibles. There's God's Bible that he preserved, and there is the devil's. And uh, the devil's counterfeit fake Bibles, and he can call them all a bunch of different things, but they're all they're all the same book, amen. And uh, so we'll we're gonna look at that today. And uh, hey, let this old jailbird from the slammer uh, expose a scam for you, all right? Uh, but let's pray first, Father. We uh, thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the blood that was shed. We thank you for our salvation by grace through faith. Uh, Lord, we thank you for preserving each and every word of your precious holy Bible. Help us to today. Uh, expose the schemes of the enemy in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so the devil wants to take away the Bible from you, uh, and he hasn't changed his tactics. Paul said, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, uh, and what did he do? He came, his very first words to mankind in the garden were, yea, hath God said? Uh, he wants to take your confidence in the authority of the scripture, because if he can get you to doubt the scripture, God's words, then he can sell you anything. That's the hustle. That's the game. Now, look with me quickly here at a map of the first couple of centuries after Christ. Boom. All right. Right there, you can see um, what we have is circled in the pink. That's Antioch. If you read the book of Acts, you will know that Antioch is where we were first called Christians. Antioch is where all the early missionary journeys went out to spread the word of God throughout the world was through Antioch. Antioch was the headquarters of the early church, the body of Christ. Antioch is where all the scriptures were being brought together and they were they were done on papyrus, scroll, papyrus scrolls that were a uh, paper that was made from the papyrus plant. And uh, they were copied and copied and copied. And they were handled so carefully because the Spirit of God was at work there with these folks. And they had the reverence for each and every word, each and every letter uh, of these scriptures so that they would not dare to change anything because they these were the true believers in Antioch and they they hallowed and respected these words as the very words of God, and the Holy Spirit was working through them. Now, on the other hand, you look down there in that circle right there, uh, uh, and that's Alexandria, Alexandria in Egypt. It's called Alexandria because uh, when uh, um, Alexander the Great conquered the known world, uh, he uh, uh, named a city <laughs> that was named after him down there in Egypt, Alexandria. And uh, they opened a school down there, a school of Greek philosophy. It was opened by a Greek philosopher by the name of Philo. And uh, so it was a secular school. Uh, it was a school of Greek philosophy. And uh, as the events of the New Testament took place, as the church began to grow, the, uh, the Greek scholars and the Greek philosophers down there in Antioch um, they they began to be interested in this, you know. They were, you know, they're they're scholars. They're interested in all writings, uh, all manuscripts, everything that's going on. So uh, some of the manuscripts out of Antioch, they end up coming down to the school, uh, the school in Alexandria, and uh, um, they fall into the hands down there of the guy who was kind of heading up the whole. Christian writings department down there, and that's a guy named Origen Adamantius, and he lived from 185 to 253 BC. Now, Origen spent the, uh, that's him right there, Origen spent uh, the first half of his life, uh, he was born down there in Alexandria, he spent the first half of his life there, and Origen was not a Christian like you and I would know Christian. Origen uh, took a, um, a, a, a 
allegorical view of the Bible. He did not take a literal view of the Bible. He thought it was all just symbolic and allegorical, and he did not have the respect for God's words that the believers up in Antioch did. So as Origen began to get the manuscripts down there, Origen takes the manuscripts and he kind of rewrites them the way his mind, his symbolic, allegorical, not literal, he is not a real believer. So he just treats it like any other literature and thinks he's going to fix it and clean it up, right? So they get, so the, all the stuff that gets down there to origin in this school of Greek philosophy gets corrupted down in Egypt. And what do we see Egypt as in the Bible? It's always a type of the world. Uh, the God's people are told not to go back into Egypt, not to desire the garlic and leeks of Egypt. Uh, God calls his son out of Egypt. So Egypt in the, in the Bible is always a picture of the world. And uh, so uh, what happens down there is because these guys are, these guys are hoity-toity and they're real fancy uh, down there in Alexandria. Uh, when they're doing, they're transcribing uh, uh, their corrupted uh, versions down there on, on vellum scrolls, on animal skins, and uh, they're and they're carefully folding them and storing them, and you know they you know. But that's not what's happening in Antioch. Antioch, this stuff's being written on paper. It's being written on paper, word for word, letter for letter, by people that respect each every word and letter. It's faithfully copied. It's faithfully copied. But the papyrus that it's written on. The material, the paper, paper don't last as long as animal skins, all right? So, there are some older, corrupted manuscripts. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Because they just lasted longer because they were on vellum. And, the, and, all, and, and we don't have the, as old of paper because paper don't last that long. But paper is what the real believers up, up in Antioch were using, all right? So, Fast forward, 1611, King James Bible comes out. God takes the Hebrew Old Testament, he takes the, the Greek New Testament, and he puts it all together. Now that the printing press is in full use, the British Empire is sitting on the throne, uh, it, you know, it was the fullness of time for God to give his perfect word to the whole world. And he does that. And in 1611, British Empire on the throne, King James Bible, the word of God goes to the whole world. Now there's printing presses. Everybody can have the word of God, each and every word, perfectly preserved. Everybody can have it in the whole world. And everybody knew that. There was no question. King James Bible, that's the word of God. Everybody knew that. But here's where the devil comes in with his scheme. 1881, he gets some unbelieving Bible atheist guys together. And they said, well, we need to redo the King James Bible, all right? We're going to update the King James Bible. That was, their, that was their lie to get into this thing. And so when they come in, it, this whole effort is led by these two guys, Westcott and Hort, 1881. These guys were not Christians. They were occultists. They were unbelievers along the same stripe as Origen Adamantius down in Alexandria. So the intention of this thing was, was we're going to uh, just kind of make a better King James. But that's not what they do. They don't use the manuscripts that came out of Antioch, where the believers were, that the King James Bible is based on. They don't use the King James Bible manuscripts. They are fascinated by the old vellum scrolls that came from origin down in Egypt. So what they come out with is the RV, the revised version of 1881. That is the first of your modern fake perversions of God's word. And that is the revised version of 1881, which is a product of what? Egypt. Origin, West Cotton Hort, boom, 1881, you get the RV. It's not a King James Bible. It's not based on the same manuscripts as the King James Bible. It's based on the corrupted stuff that came out of Alexandria, Egypt. And why did I say there's only two Bibles? Because 
every single other Bible, including your New King James, every single other one, they followed West Cotton Hort and gave precedent to the older vellum scrolls that came from origin out of Alexandria, Egypt. So that's basically it. There's only two Bibles. There's the one that came out of Egypt through origin, through West Cotton Hort, through the 1881 revised version. And every other single fake Bible is that same Bible that was sold by a different name. Uh, so they don't mess with anybody's copyright, <laughs> but it's the same corrupted book that came out of Egypt from origin. Or you can take the word of God that came from papyrus skulls out of Antioch from the apostles and was placed in the King James Bible and spread the word of God over the entire globe. And to this day, there's nothing in this entire world that has ever brought more honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ than this old black book. So that's your choice. <laughs> you're going to have that bunk junk <laughs> that came out of Egypt, or you can have the bread the Lord thy God hath given thee. It's just that simple. Now, a lot of y'all ain't going to believe that. And I understand that because you know why? It's a lot easier to fool somebody than to convince them that they have been fooled. And if you're buying the whole modern textual criticism, manuscript evidence, fake news lies, and believing what they're saying about that that garbage from origin out of Egypt and West Cotton Hort was better, hey, I don't know what else I can tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you this, though. I have the word of God in my hand. Every single word, 100% pure, 100% perfect. Can you say that? You can't. Amen. Just believe God. Romans, I mean, Psalms 12, verse 6 and 7. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The only 100% pure and perfect thing on the face of the planet Earth is the book I hold in my hand. God bless you. We'll see you in the next one.